So the idea behind the FestDAO is to design something that we still haven't had yet, which is an exit to community by default organization that's on chain. So when you say exit to community is that the value generated by this organization is by default being shared to all of the people who are producing it in the mode of cooperation that's actually being used. The org also does it in a certain way, but just we're trying to take it a step forward using the DAO stack framework. So that's kind of the, the goal. So um, putting in simple terms, how to start with nothing and bootstrap a for-profit collaborative network owned by the ones who built it and no one else, right? Um, I like the idea of keeping things as simple as possible, especially when you're aiming for a massive collaboration and runaway effects. So I call it keep it swarmy, right? So a group of people identified a need and devised a solution for it. We're going to call these guys the initiators of the DAO. That's usually happening. Um, solve the problem and then you sell the results. Instead of asking for investments and selling future dividends and turning this into a startup of sorts, produce a direct value. In the case of FestDAO, it's events for the Web3 community and brand placement for brands. And we're going to talk about it later share the results of that collaboration and then our bank the work while you don't have any money. So you're actually giving people something for their time that's worth the future. So actually, the investors are the workers. Does, does this make sense? Cool. Now, your main job is to attract and train the, t the talent, really. You create a game that's interesting that people are willing to play and just repeat the cycle for every new vertical you invent, right? Looks kind of like this. <laughs> Um, you have a group of initiators who come up with a solution. In our case, DAOFest, right? We created DAOFest. 15 people came up to me and said, hey, I want to organize a DAOFest. And I was like, that's great. You and other 14 people, I cannot coordinate this. Let's launch a DAO. So that's how it all started, right? Um, after we did this, I needed to trans transform this into a replicable, simple process that people could do without asking me too many questions because I actually work for a DAO stack in the communications team, and I can't just do DAOFests all the time. Right? Once I did this, I turned this process, this replicable process, into an obvious proposal form. So our proposal form has a set of actions that you can take. It's only a few actions. And it keeps the thing constrained, and it kind of guides the, the worker, the creator, in the process of organizing a DAO fest itself. Workers get DAO tokens for their hours, reputation, and money, and they contribute work hours in. If you do it well, if, if the, the game is fun to play and you attract people, your solution is going to soon be everywhere. And the acceleration of this has taken us by surprise completely. I'm going to show you some numbers. And then once you have relevance, once the solution is everywhere and your name is known, you can create new verticals, right? So let's break it down. The solution. In the case of DAOFest, you got to make sure that everybody knows the why and the what from the get-go. So. Contrary to a DAO like Genesis, where anyone can show up and propose anything that they want to do, in a fast DAO, we do one thing. We're like a bakery. We make bread. That's it, right? We keep it simple. It makes sense. And I think success increases through clarity, psychological safety, that being the most important one. People shouldn't go through too much internal drama to feel like they can be a part of your system. It should be welcoming. And a well-documented scaffold approach, right? The scaffolded approach. So if people can actually, if a very interested person can figure it out by themselves, that's all the much better. So the initiator's job is basically to design this game, to have a very simple replicable process, a set of defined actions, boom, 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 right? I look at the organization, I know where I fit. Ah, that's my talent, I'm gonna do that, right? So it's a machine of engaging personal talent for collective gains. Um, just one comment. How do you keep it in place? Because we're, we're not changing anything in the DAO side. The DAO is the same DAO. The same DAO as Genesis, the same as any other DAO. How do you keep this in place? You hold it in place by culture. The initiators are going to have more rap in the beginning, and you keep it in place by culture. So the goal here is to get rid of any subjectivity in relation to monetary values or how much reputation to ask for things. Every action has a specific payout, both financial and reputation. It becomes sort of like a game. Um, you can actually get someone addicted into running DAOFests. I think it happened to Jason over there a little bit. He took like half of Southeast Asia. 
And, <laughs> but the thing is, in the initial stage, when you launch this sort of a DAO, this on-chain cooperative that is worker-owned, your client are, is the creator. The creator is your client. If you don't have people interested in playing your game with you and being part of your story, you got nothing. So humans are the most important part of this DAO, and making it human interesting or interesting for humans is the most important part of this DAO at a beginner stage. So therefore, you build a decent onboarding platform, which a lot of people forget to do. So if you want to join the Fest DAO and organize DAO Fests, or film them, or help with them, or do business development for the DAO, or do anything that you think is useful for this DAO, just go to daofest.world, and all the explanations will be there. We've agreed on a couple of rules, but nothing set in stone is still a DAO. Propose how we could do it differently, put it up to a vote, right? So all of this structure, all of this culture that I suggested, it's still um, nothing more than a framework. It's not on chain. It's just a, the way we've agreed to collaborate. So here's how it works at the moment. There's only about six, seven, eight different actions you can take, and they have defined um, rep rewards, and you've taken one of them today. You attended a DAO fest. So you have 10 reputation points you can rock up at the DAO. If you kick back, I will try to rep drop it to you as soon as possible. But if you are wanna, wanna make my life easier, just go to daofest.io slash festdao and hit us up with a proposal for 10 reputation points. You've earned it, right? As long as you can prove that this wallet was here somehow by a kickback, that works. And then you have all the basic actions that you need to do at DAO Fest. Somebody has to be a lead organizer who's going to be really staked in making this thing happen. He needs help from other people, like co-organizers. I'm gonna certainly recommend that Luke and Jason today get 20 rep for co-organizing this DAO Fest. Um, and then I'm gonna get 30 rep because I'm doing a, a speech, and Luke is gonna get 30 rep because he's doing a speech, and so forth, right? There's a little bit of a correlation. Kind of like every work hour is approximately 2.5 reputation points that it's, we are paying our, ourselves usually $20, and we're getting one fest for it. That's how kind of the DAO works right now. The fest is the DAO token. So this is what we've done. This was three months, right? So you can see the first Berlin DAO fest down there, 160 people in August last year. And then we organized the Hamburg one. The DAO didn't exist yet. We organized the Amsterdam and the Barcelona one. The DAO didn't exist yet. And the DAO gets launched mid-October. Mid Look what happens. Look what happens, and I'm really not pushing for this, I swear to God, and we're getting like a steady rate of seven events per month. Do you know any other company in the web-free space that's been able to do this in any way? It's pretty insane, right? And it's not a lot of people. It's like eight folk, 10 folk, 12 tops. It's not that many people. Here's the number, 720 participants, 31 events, 96 workshops, 14 countries, 19 cities, 300,000 people online in access through Twitter and other reach modes of digital interaction. And we have about 33 rep holders in the DAO right now. That's pretty insane. So if you think like a normal company, like a legacy linear uh, organization, how much money would you need to get that kind of reach? Because we used $6,250 through the DAO. It's pretty cool, DAOs work. So if we keep at the same pace, by the end of 2020, there will have been 310 talks or workshops, 3,400 participants, we will have used 55K and blah, blah, blah. But it's not gonna keep it like this. The, if there's one thing that nature and decentralization don't like, it's steady ratios. Like things tend to either die out or grow, right? So can your DAO do this? Has your DAO done this? Look for DAOs that have done this. I think there's something in common between these DAOs, which is an empowered swarm of enthusiasts, right? It's people, enthusiasm being the key, the key word here, right? So what is the offer of the Fest DAO right now? The new vertical that was born. We proved that we can coordinate and organize a shit ton of events. Yay, what now? There's real value at these events. Brands want to be part of these events, right? So now we're selling this, very simple. How to place your brand in 100 plus events without a, uh, around the world with just one on-chain transaction. That's, the, that's it, tell your friends, tell your company owner friends that this is a possibility. And if you count how much this would cost, and I'm not gonna go through this here because this is not a commercial pitch, you have like up to 70% in savings on, on the price that you normally pay. So this is an actual like market uh, product placement innovation made available by the coordination mode of DAOs. 
and there's many others. And I want this type of DAO to be a template for any other idea that you guys can have. So this is our like packages. I'm not going to go through this, but they're organized and they make sense. And if you want, or if you know anybody who should want, schedule a talk with me throughout the week, or Luke, or Jason, and we will be happy to like present properly the pitch deck. Right, so what's the future? What are we trying to build? Right now, every work hour is worth $20. Doesn't matter how much you think you're special, you get $20 and that's it. And you get one fast token, right? But this is a temporary stage. We wanna actually move forward. We want to let the worker choose their stake percentage. So we wanna give you the option of taking all your money out or taking a percentage of your hours as fast tokens. And this will give you the only way to get dividends in the future. This will define the future value of your work hours, and this will give you governance privileges, right? So what do I mean by defining the future value of your work hours? It's a little curve. A fest is not made equal. If I hold a fest, um, if, or actually an hour is not made equal, my hour has a value defined by the amount of fest I hold. So the amount of hours that I worked unpaid for the DAO make my pay hour, paid hours worth more basically. As I work and I get paid, I choose my stake percentage. I can say 100% and get all the money, or I can get more fast and make my future hours be worth more money. But let's say that I'm in a pinch. I need to pay some bills. I can burn fast for rep. I can burn fast plus rep for cashing out and going down the curve because I have less fast. Or I can burn it all together all the way down to rage quit this DAO stacked DAO, which hasn't been possible before. So that's what we want to design. It's very simple, and we're looking for technical support. So if you are a DAO specialist, specialist smart contract uh, wizard, maverick, hit me up, and let's design this. Uh, these are my contacts. First comers on any of the um, packages get 15% off, and I hope this is an interesting idea for you guys. Have a good day. How much time do I have left? We've got five minutes. Do you have any questions? Fifteen? I did this in five minutes. What? I have half an. I give myself half an hour. Oh my God! I'm horrible. Questions? Yes. Here, this is the important slide to gamify it, right? Because there is an optimal range of how many fests you want to hold at one time. So why does this make the DAO work even with zero money? Basically, this is the sweat equity thing. The fest token is not limited by cryptography. Fest token is limited by the laws of physics and the patience of men and, human, and women. <laughs> so if you're willing to work for free, you can acquire fest. Fest will give you power over the future of this company and if you were one of the initiators, you would be collecting fast and you have zero cash. If you prove your capacity to generate value and attract cash for it, you have power over the cash. It's simple as that. But because the curve start, starts like tapering off, starts not being worth it, you're incentivized to either find new people to join this organization or to keep cashing out a little bit and working back up, cashing out a little bit, working back up. So there's, it creates a tendency for the DAO to work, accumulate a coffer that then becomes collateral for this token itself. And then you can create a secondary market for that token. So this is kind of like the idea that we want to. I can imagine it for anything that has a simple replica, a replicable product. Um, so I could imagine like a, could be a systems maintenance now. Like, uh, maintainers of systems that like people who are getting paid per hour to go check on systems for example just to think like this it's not too creative it's something that's replicable you can create a map for it it's like a down mechanical turk <laughs> that if you find the right people to do the right thing they will do it even for free because they like it so it's a it's a intrinsic motivation exploit um, that can then create act an actual payoff for the people that were originally originally exploited if you know what I mean.
Um, I did not have the privilege of watching Jason's talk. After Dow Fests, I usually spend a day in my pajamas watching all the talks, uh, which I will do. And, um, but I, right now, like, how does it work, Jason, when these investors come in? What do they get for, for this investment in a co-op? Percentage of profit? Hmm? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We, have, we actually have proper technology for questions. So just to connect, I'm trying to avoid having external expectations influence the, the process of people interacting and creating value. So that's why I kind of blocked the investor idea. Once I do build it, this is not built, by the way. This, this is barely understood by Pat, who's my boss. Like, this is the first time I'm talking about this in public. Um, so th once this is built, we, we can consider this as sort of a new primitive for, for collaboration, and then we can move forward. I think I've seen you before. Okay, my true joy with this would be that we would sometimes, at st thinking really high, five years, find some verticals that actually we would disrupt entrepreneurship. We would actually make the, the need for the, the Ayn Rand entrepreneur who like takes 80% of everything to himself because he set it up, because he's the great warrior. We would destroy this across several verticals and it would be like these big funds where people would know how to access, now, know how to produce the value, know how to get their money, they would be going up and down, and this would be actually a DeFi pool that would be making money on itself, and like, there would be all, it's like extreme automated gig economy where you could, like, now I wanna learn how to be a photographer, and then you go to the photography DAO, and you like do basic photography, you start by editing pictures and stuff, and you make your money, and you keep this, and then you just build your own professional joy out of interacting with these accumulated value capturing automated organizations. That's kind of what the triangulation of the relationship between our rep and, and value is, is about. Like, if you're faster, okay, you made a little bit of money on us. If you're slow, you kind of lost a little bit of money, but it, we kind of keep it tight. Um, it's all about like seeding a little bit of common sense and, and not trying to be 100% ungameable, but being like extremely hard to completely game.
So that that's a, that's another talk that I need. I need to talk to smarter people than me to see how everything is going to play out. But I, what I feel is that. So let's say that the DAO has a million in the center, right? If I have a direct correlation between, let's say that the DAO explodes and distributes all its dividends, maybe we can have a kill switch somewhere. Um, then the potential value of this fast is, could be like a thousand dollars, but you can't access it because it's limited by the relationship between rep and etc. Blah, blah, blah. But if I have a bunch of rep and I don't have enough, uh, if I have a bunch of fast and I don't have enough rep. Um, or I have too much rep actually, not enough fast, I can buy fast from you and I can cash out. So it's worth like $20 to you, but it's worth 70 for me. So I can buy it from you and I can cash out at a higher valuation, creating a giant incentive for a newcomer to work completely for free for the DAO so that the original founders can kind of eventually later cash out. But I need to sit like in a mountain for hours and just like think of all that can happen. Limitations on sponsorships. So there is actually like um, a pitch deck online. If you go to the Fast, Dow world and click sponsor, you can get the pitch deck right now. Or if you go to DowFest.io and click sponsor, there's even a video. And the limit, they're not too innovative. It's like putting your brands on things online, putting your brands on physical things, designing a product demo for you, speaking at events, and at the highest level, designing your own DAO Fest series, or like not called DAO Fest, something else, Just designing a, an event series for your brand. Yeah. Well, the DAO would have to vote it. But it's possible. Yes, it's possible. The DAO will have to vote it. And if, and if the people that wanted to take the, the BP gig got voted out, they could fork the DAO and just do it. That's the beauty of what we're doing. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>